the Breeders' Cup Sprint a few years ago, but let's take you back two years ago to a horse that didn't win the King's Bishop, but a horse who you might be familiar with. Name that horse on the outside who closes strongly to finish third, beaten in a three-horse photo finish. Hint, he never lost another race. He looks like he wants to go a mile and a quarter in the Breeders' Cup Classic, doesn't he? He does. Valid Video wins it. That horse was Ghost Zapper, recently retired last year's Horse of the Year. Sorry for that. In the Classic Division, let's check out the poll in this division. This is the TVG Sprint Division. Lost in the Fog at number one, three-year-old. And Lost in the Fog uh, has never faced older horses before. He will certainly have to do that later in the year. He hasn't faced the best competition yet, but he certainly has been handling the competition he's been seeing with great ease. As his trainer says, you don't go out of your way to find unreasonable positions. This is the TVG Sprint Division. The King's Bishop at seven furlongs, and that is a big difference going six to seven. Pusaichi Rockstar breaks from the inside, 11 to one. Social Probation getting some support at seven to one, and Lost in the Fog is a bargain at four to five right now. Somewhat surprising there. He hasn't been this high of a price since his very first career start when he was six to five. The Golden Gate Fields, anyone impressively. The Daddy is two for two lifetime. Steve Asmussen saddles Santana Strings. You're familiar with Storm Surge from our Triple Crown prep races early this year. Better than Bonds rounds out the field. Going to get back up to Bristol, Connecticut as we look at Lost in the Fog. John Buchegras, you should run away from your position. Go to the Bristol OTB and hammer Lost in the Fog. He is four to five, John. Uh, I'm Red championships here all day. Two hour Sports Center at Saratoga Special leading you next to the King's Bishop. And when you do that, you must do this. Show lost in the fog. He's coming out of that and into prominence. We'll tell you the untold story about the fog. It's inside your TV set next from Sports Center at Saratoga. Only two for two lifetime. Making his third start is now the second choice at seven to one. And you see social probation in Santana Strings both today. Well, you saw Lost in the Fog on Belmont Day winning the Reba Ridge. So you probably know a little bit about him, but not everything about him. And Janine is the one who's going to explain all that. Who are these people? Well, Kenny, I'm about to tell you. Lost in the Fog is another Cinderella story, much like Smarty Jones was last year. Lost in the Fog's 85-year-old owner has never had more than a handful of modestly successful horses, and his trainer is a 30-year veteran horseman who got his start at the small tracks in Washington State. Well, these two partners are enjoying the horse of a lifetime. The lady that bred and raised that horse told me that uh, all the horses were out in the field one day and they, she was hollering for them to all come back in and they all came in but one. And so she just said, huh, he must be lost in the fog. I don't think that I've had any better horses than lost in the fog. We've bought bad ones as well as good ones, but this horse just kind of jumped out at me. He had a real nice way of going. He looked good, a very attractive animal uh, as far as his confirmation. As far as an owner, you can't find a better guy. Well, Mr. Alio is an 85-year-old, uh, died in the wool San Franciscan. He's loyal. Uh, we always discuss things. I think we've been together 26, 27 years now. That's something that you don't see a lot in this business. What makes him real special is he's fast, and uh, that's a pretty good ingredient to have in a thoroughbred. He's just kind of the complete horse. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of bad habits. He's an easy horse on himself when he trains in the morning. I never see him get nervous. His eating habits are good. Uh, he's good to work around, especially for a, a stud coat. If he would have been my horse, he might have been sold three, four months ago. Well, that's the old saying, every man has his price, probably every horse has his price. But I'm the wrong guy to ask about that because he's not mine to sell. So Mr. Alio could answer that. So far, the price tag has not been high enough, I know that. So uh, I suppose if he wins Saturday, maybe you know we'll go back to the bargaining table. He's been very good to me, taking me a lot of places. I've met a lot of nice people. Uh, no one appreciates having this horse any more than I do. We've always tried to do the right thing by the horse, and we always will. Well, though Lost in the Fog was bred and raised in Florida, he's not lost in that Ocala Fog anymore, and he's poised to give both his owner and trainer their very first grade one wins this afternoon. Kenny? 
Owen over and watched him walking to the paddock for schooling yesterday, and he looked happy, shiny, but there is one small problem. Could there be a chink in Lost in the Fog's armor? Possibly, since his last start, he has come up with an ailment in his left hind foot. It's a split hoof or a quarter crack. You see there, they've been training him in that circular horseshoe called a bar shoe. It comes off of the race today. This was a shot in the stall a couple of mornings ago. You see it is bandaged. Trainer Greg Gilchrist says it is of no concern whatsoever to him, but some of the rival horsemen say at least it might give them some glimmer of hope as they try to tackle the unbeaten horse. He's fine. He's one to two. We're three minutes from post. We'll take a break. We'll come back and send him around the track. Seven furlongs in the Kings to go six times, but no one has beaten him yet. Today, Lost in the Fog, trainer Greg Gilchrist and jockey Russell Bays make their first trip to Saratoga. The unbeaten streak is again on the line in the King's Bishop. Back at Saratoga in advance of the King's Bishop, there is Storm Surge. Let's go deep inside the daily racing forum to places Jay Pridman cannot go without parental permission. Storm Surge was bred at Overbrook Farm of the late W.T. Young, who also still owns Storm Surge. He's a son of Storm Cat, the Overbrook Stallion that is the number one sire in North America. We're going to look at the Amsterdam, his last start. The trouble line reads, awkward start inside. But when you watch him come out of post one, it wasn't that much of an awkward start at all. More of a concern is that because of post one, he had to be sent to the early lead by Robbie Alvarado. They had no other choice from the inside post position. He usually doesn't like to run that way. Storm Surge faded to finish fourth in that race, beat two and a quarter lengths. Today, he has post six with Rafael Bayarano, and they plan to come from just off the pace. The winner of that race, incidentally, was Santana Strings. He is 14 to one right now. Let's get to the one to four favorite. That's 25 cents on the dollar, lost in the fog. Lowest odds in the history of the King Bishop. Quint. We're with Harry Alia, the owner of Lost in the Fog. And Harry, what is the current price tag on this horse? There is no price tag. Why won't you sell? What? What? Why wouldn't you sell this horse? Why wouldn't I sell? If I sold him, I wouldn't have the horse. How would I? What, what kind of impact uh, has he had on your life? It's exciting, thrilling. It's one of the most important things ever in my life. You, you played minor league baseball. You uh, battled in uh, World War II, the Battle of the Bulge. How does this compare to those uh, those, those lifetime moments? How am I going to compare if this great horse winning eight in a row with the battle of the goddamn balls. Forget it. Thank you, Harry. Best of luck today. Well, I guess we didn't like that question anyway. Okay, One to four the odds on Lost here. in the Fog. I didn't know Butchagross was going to go with a suitcase full of money, but would you agree he ought to be about that heavy? I mean, who can touch him in this race, Randy? I agree he ought to be about that heavy. I, I won't use the similar expletive there. 86-year-old <laughs> Harry Alio. There he is. Obviously, he's a crusty guy, and... Uh, He's got a lot to be proud of in this horse, and you can tell he's proud, but he tends to express it a little more directly maybe than other people might. It's Cable. True, Reloaded. that's true. Tom it Durkin, is cable. let's keep this G-rated. Tom, roll him out. We're ready to run the back, 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 King's Bishop. And here is Storm Surge and Better Than Bonds. Ready for the King's Bishop stakes. They're in the gate. Lost in the Fog comes out there and quickly to the lead is Lost in the Fog. And the Daddy runs second, Fusa Ichi Rockstar third toward the inside. Santana Strings has come away running in fourth, better than Bonds fifth on the outside. Storm surges six, he's about nine lengths from the lead today. A break of another four, back to social probation. Down the back stretch, Lost in the Fog, drilled a quarter in 22 seconds flat, pressed by Fusa Ichi Rockstar. The Daddy not far behind in third. Three lengths back, Santana Strings is under a ride at the half mile pole. He's fourth. Better than Bonds, Storm Surge now beginning to pick it up down toward the inside. It's seven lengths back now to social probation. As Lost to the Fog rolls along on that lead through a half in 44 and three-fifths seconds. And now he's letting it out a notch. Now he's opening up, opening up with a quarter pole to a three-length lead as the field turns for home. The daddy left reeling back in second. Storm Surge is coming up the inside now. Then Santana Strings. And way out in the middle of the track is social probation. And now now they're entering the final furlong here. It's an undefeated loss in the fog with a three and a half length lead. The daddy is game.
game. Social probation closing ground on the outside, but they're coming down to the finish. And another brilliant sprinting performance by nine for nine, lost in the fog. The margin at the end was about three lengths. Social probation was second, followed by better than Bonds and the Daddy. The final time was one minute 22 and two fifth seconds. He made it look very easy. I guess nine now would be nine. the wrong time to ask him how much he's oh, selling for. <laughs> Lost in the fog just destroyed this field. I mean, he's left this field as he has every other field. Hopefully this is the time those who have doubted him will stop. Now we get to see him go forward, and who knows what else, the sprint against the older ones. There's just no competition for this horse in the three-year-old ranks. None whatsoever sprinting-wise, and, and now Lost in the Fog will go on and get to face older horses, and we'll get to see exactly what he's made of when he has to run against a horse like Pomeroy, for example, who looks so impressive here at Saratoga in his last start. Maybe some of the other top sprinters around the country, but right now Lost in the Fog certainly looks awesome. Russell Bay fits him to a T. First grade one win since 1991. Russell, congratulations. Yeah, right over Thank here. you. What a horse, huh? Russell, nice work. I used to watch you at Long Acres. Good oh, run. Going way back, huh? That was easy, wasn't it? Not? You just keep going and going and nobody ever gets to you. Yeah, that's pretty much what all these races have been like. How about against the older ones? Can you predict something for the sprint? Well, I hate making predictions like that, but it's going to take an awful good horse to beat this colt. Now, obviously, you've got a lot of career highlights. You've won more than 9,000 races. How does riding this horse fit in those career highlights for you? You know what? Getting a horse like this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I'm just tickled to death to be part of the team with him. Russell Bay's winner of the King's Bishop, a runaway winner on the unbeaten, about. lost in the fog, nine for nine at seven different tracks. One prediction, I'll bet you Janine Edwards doesn't get to interview Harry Alio <laughs> in the winner's circle. You know, what's so impressive is how both this and then the Reaver Ridge, one horse runs at him, the next horse runs at him, and he just swats him away as though they, they have no significance and now he's going to run the race. And the thing about Lost in the Fog is that he's a little adaptable. He showed in the swale stakes he doesn't have to have the early lead. He's just so fast, he takes Russell Bays there. 22 flat, Bays was just sitting on him. He was in control of the race at that point. Ball game over. Jerry Bailey pouring through the back here at Saratoga. Here's what they're doing on Tuesday at a theme park nearby. Racing. And Pablo Fragoso was your winner. Hasn't won so many on the track, but got a nice win here. Got a lovely vlog or something. By the way, we got the Argent Mortgage Grand Prix. Now we're running of that tomorrow. ESPN 3.30 Eastern for the car racers. Please do get a chance to watch that. Well, while we were away, there was a jockey's objection, and we understand Calvin Burrell, the jockey of the two, social probation, who ended up in second place, claimed foul against the winner, lost in the fog. We've looked at it a few times, Randy. I don't think it was lost in the fog. We had anything to do with it to begin with. This could be the most bogus foul claim in the history of Saratoga. It took place at the start, and as you watch the three lost in the fog, and it has already been adjudicated, it's, it's already been dismissed, but let's show the head on and show you exactly what we were talking about. Watch the one Fusaichi rock star bear out at the start into the two social probation. Lost in the Fog kept a straight line from post position number three now. You let it roll. You watch Lost in the Fog. It was Fusaichi Rockstar that took the right turn. Burrell claimed foul against Lost in the Fog. Really, the only basis of claiming foul against Lost in the Fog is that he just ran too fast. Yeah, that'd be the only you can't way to claim foul for that. Only way to beat him in this race. And the other thing about that is social probation was going to go to the back of the field and run exactly. this race. And look how it comes on strong in the end. Social probation coming up as Russell Bays is looking around the CPS company. He didn't. He jogged home the 109 flat. Was, was a pullback time. I mean, that, that, you don't even count his time in this race so much. Very at impressive. At the six mark is what I mean. As we head a look uh, there at Harry Alio, his reaction once again for the ninth straight time, the horse that he refuses to sell. Painter Greg Gilt was oh, he's watching not also. Him. Oh, no. Why would he sell him? He wouldn't have the horse there. Final time, 122.56 for the seven furlongs. That's nine in a row. Lost in the fog as they enter the winner's enclosure. Lost in the fog is a direct descendant of the Darley Arabian, Randy. That was New York State Senator Joe Bruno presenting the trophy there to Harry Alio. What, uh, what fine we, historic data you're on we all? $2.60. That sounds like 30% on your money. You don't get that in the stock market in a minute, 21 seconds or something. And notice the time of 122.56 was uh, significantly faster than the 123.20 something posted by First Samurai in the hopeful. Boy, Janine's game. Janine Edwards 
Godspeed. <laughs> well, Kenny, I'm here with winning owner Harry Alio and trainer Greg Gilchrist. Congratulations to both of you. Greg, you had said at the beginning of the year that this race was going to be your Kentucky Derby. How does it feel? Feels like I won the Kentucky Derby today. Um, uh, what can you say? I mean, nine for nine. Every time you go, this might be the time, you know, and you try to prepare yourself for it, but he hasn't let me down yet, so I'll just stick with this. This is all right. Mr. Alio, what is a win like this worth to you? What does it mean to you? Well, it's it's priceless. That's why I never sold the horse. It's, you can't buy a moment like this. Fantastic. Why is this colt so special? Why what? Why is he so special? Because <laughs> he can run real fast, that's why. <laughs> Greg, obviously that quarter crack not an issue for you today. Yeah, I looked at him when he came back there. It did not split open. I didn't see any blood or anything. So we'll go right back to the bar shoe, train him in that. And uh, Mr. Alio and I will talk over maybe where we want to run next. There's a race in October at Belmont Park. Yeah, I've heard that from a few people. <laughs> yeah. Any thoughts on what you might do? I'd say 75-25 right now to go. That you might supplement into the TVG Breeders' Cup Sprint. So hopefully we will see you there. Enjoy this victory. And guys, you heard what he said. A win like this is priceless. Indeed it is, but they still pay off. Now we look at the longest streaks. Lost in the fog up to nine. Got a little ways to go. Now since 1900, modern era, the longest unbeaten streaks, not just win streaks where Cigar would be on that list and you see Lost in the Fog joins Seattle Slough and the still campaigning happy ticket at the bottom of that list with an impressive nine in a row. That's the Bossberg stakes they were talking about at Belmont Park on October the 1st. And Russell Bay's getting some notice. I was pretty sure I was in the clear then. Observingly so. Record for the most popular King's Bishop winner on betting and the second largest margin of victory ever. Next is the Travers. Bellamy Road going to try to come back off his seventh place in the Kentucky Derby. See what Nick Zito has up his sleeve when we return. Sports Center, Sarah.